Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Chloe Walters Wallace, the co creator of the Caribbean Film Academy. Um, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to the launch and kick up, kickoff of Caribbean Film Academy. Um, this year, the Caribbean Film Academy is streaming to you live from our home in Miami, Florida, and various nodes of the Caribbean diaspora, ancestral home of the Tequesta, Seminole, Mikuski, and Taino, the latter of whom also populated several Caribbean nations, along with people such as the Kalinago, Lokono, Lakayo, and many other native peoples whose history has been lost to us. When the Caribbean Film Academy started out in a storefront on, the Flat, on Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn in 2012, it was the very specific aim of promoting and supporting Caribbean filmmaking and filmmakers in the region and diaspora um, that we focused on. Now, under the auspices of Third Horizon, the Caribbean Film Academy has evolved into an expansive virtual seminar aimed at introducing filmmakers and producers from across the region and its diaspora to burgeoning new efforts and resources from local cross-Caribbean film industries and the international film landscape. Thank you for joining us for this evening's keynote towards a new aesthetic, Caribbean cinema in focus with the incredible Getty Fadan. I'm very excited. I hope you all are very excited to join us here. Um, this session is presented in partnership with Playgo, Emerge, Digicel, and Firelight Media. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit about Getty now. Born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, reared in the United States, and having come of age cinematically in Paris, France, Getty Filan is an award-winning Haitian-American filmmaker with an eclectic background in the film and television industry. She writes and directs and produces both documentaries and narrative films. Her feature narrative debut, IT Mon Amour, premiered internationally at the Toronto International Film Festival in 2016 and toured the global festival circuit for four years. It won Best Narrative Feature at Black Star and was Haiti's very first Oscar contender for Best Foreign Language Film category in 2018. Getty is the first Haitian woman to have shot and directed a feature entirely in Haiti. Also, her feature-length documentary, Broken Stones, on self-recovery in post-Quake Haiti, was selected in over two dozen festivals around the world. It garnered two grand prize awards at the Belize International Film Festival and at FEMI in Guadeloupe, and was broadcast on French television in 2012. When she's not working on her own films, she's producing and or showcasing and distributing the works of other filmmakers. In January of 2018, she launched the first edition of La Lumière du Sud, Reconstruire Cinematographique de Jacques Mel, a film festival with a mission to instigate and inspire a viable film industry in Haiti. Please forgive my French. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Um, I now turn our session over to our keynote speaker, Getty Filan. Hello. Um, thank you so much, Chloe. Um, I have to admit, when I was first asked um, to um, be the keynote speaker, um, my immediate reaction was, oh my god, they think I'm old. I'm a, I'm a veteran. I'm being monumentalized. Um, then I realized that I had been at it for more than 25 years. And in um, for the French and the Americans, I'm still an emerging voice, go figure. Um, but seriously, I did hesitate also because I am so over the virtual space. I really wish I were standing in front of you and with you in a beautiful room where I can um, see familiar faces and, and latch on to them. And, and as I um, deliver this very intimidating keynote address, um, I'm going to do my best not to bore you uh, but before I go any further, I would like to thank everyone at the Caribbean Film Academy, Chloe, Timba, Alicia, Sergio, Yafet, and also Ramola and, um, and Jason. Uh, when they launched the first um, Third Horizon Film Festival, my film, Aiti Mon Amour, was invited to premiere. 
and and you are inviting me here to be a part of this very groundbreaking and vital and necessary event. And so for me, this is like a homecoming. And um, I must say the other reason I, I, I also hesitate in taking, in saying yes, not hesitate in taking part, but in saying yes, was the title, um, the theme of decolonizing the gaze um, or the screen. And I felt completely intimidated by that because I don't consider my expert myself an expert in decolonization whatsoever. Um, but I do feel that it is a necessary evil and that we must address it. But I also think that it also is a, a, a waste of our time as we spend a lot of it decolonizing, undoing something that we did not do. And um, like I said, I don't see myself as an expert in the matter. There are countless books, chapters, exhibitions, symposia and conferences, Zooms, of which um, this one is yet another contribution, laden with discussions about it. We are in a landfill littered with, with precise ideas about decolonization, the implications of its application and anticipation. Some might see decolonization as a necessary confrontation to alter cinematic practice for the better and to rectify the wrongs of the past. But should we mandate the artist filmmaker to decolonize the screen? I understand why we feel behooved as a people who have been colonized to take on that responsibility. But is it truly our responsibility? Colonization has diverted us and divert. I really wanted to use the word, the French word, dérouté, which I found to be so much more precise than divert. But I, I, I then I said derouted, but that doesn't exist um, in English. But we will use the word divert in English. Um, it has uprooted our ancestors, and we are its collateral damage. But to spend time pontificating or creating work with the sole agenda to decolonize only further deroutes us, distracts us. It puts us on, on, on a defensive path, having to constantly justify our work, our intentions, our mere existence. The incessant, atten the incessant attention that we give to it is is kind of like feeding a monster who has come into your home to destroy you. Should you starve it? Should you leave the house? Build an entirely new house? I guess it all depends on how important the house was to you in the first place. So is the actual hostile and alienating to people of color cinema industry that important to you for you to be fighting to integrate it? Even if it means alienating yourself and even further annihilating your true vision, your voice, these questions inform my purpose here at this moment in this current state of affairs. It is from this standpoint I come to you today not to discuss the decolonization of the screen, but to offer alternatives, to encourage you to boldly create new prisms through which you see yourself, your community, and the world at large to celebrate the, the idiosyncrasies of our unique stories, to break away from the tropes of homogeneity, stereotypes, and, Arist and, and, and Aristotelian archetypes, to create your own archetypes, to break rules, bend time and space. I would like to implore you to, inf to form allegiances with those who resemble you, not necessarily physically, but who share the same ethos about fabricating images and making new cinema that are based on genuine human experiences and not just for, driven by profit. I am here to inspire you to find total autonomy and sovereignty in your stories and imagine creative, sustainable ecosystems to fund and exhibit them. So one can say my purpose here is, in my own humble way, to disrupt, reroute, and recenter the gaze for you and not for them to invite you to focus on creating brand new canvases to boldly project ourselves, our worldviews, our own angst, our own beauty and pain, our mysteries and myths. If you are here today looking for a template and how to guide or how to guide and how to decolonize the screen, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It would be pompous of me 
to offer you some grandiloquent rhetoric on the matter. Rather than theorize, I will speak from my own experiences as a filmmaker, and hopefully it will inspire you. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. I do not pretend to have answers or truths, but I do have great, a great deal of action. I stand on the, bed, on the bedrock of my action. I have chosen a video that speaks of one of my actions and set the tone for this address. Can we cue the video? Hello. Sorry, just one, one, one moment. Okay. All right, now that we're all pumped up. Um, so th that that clip was from the last edition of um, um, the Les Lumières du Sud Rencontre Cinématographique de Jacques Mel, which is the cinematic encounter. I don't like to call it a festival. And it is for the purpose of bringing together filmmakers from the global south and to celebrate films of the global south. And it's in, in, in its um, totality, of course, um, and um, cinemas that resemble us, but it is also to instigate a film industry in in T um, while celebrating these images um, and these different aesthetics um, that are not necessarily always from the north, but um, to put the south in conversation with each other. And our our mandate is is basically to have the filmmakers be present. And not only just to show films, but so younger filmmakers can be inspired by these filmmakers and be in conversations with them in the same plane, in the same space. And, and that year we invited um, our guest of honor. That year was, was focused on, on, on the African continent it, and, and our theme was um, um, the many states of Africa. And our guest of honor was Suleiman Sisse and um, a great Malian um, filmmaker. And um, through Suleiman Sisse's work, Yelen, the seminal film of Suleiman Sisse was the first African film I had ever seen. And in fact, to my 
shame and dismay. Um, I had no idea there were African filmmakers on the continent when I saw when I saw the film Yelen. And yes, I was naive, ill-informed, and miseducated. Um, but um, Cisse was born during French colonial rule, and he was already 20 years old when Mali became independent. Um, in his film Yelen, he allowed himself the total freedom to play and bend time to destabilize the audience. He imposed his vision unapologetically. He did not reinvent cinema. He shifted the gaze and inspired me to trust the way I saw the world or the way I wanted to see the world and fight for my imagination and vision. And if you have never seen this film, shame on you. The other filmmaker who would reinforce this for me was Julie Dash with her lyrical cinematic trance, Daughters of the Dust. She took cinematic storytelling to a whole new, new sphere and the audience with it. She placed us in an entirely bold environmental and filmic landscapes that we have never seen um, people of color inhabit before. There was nothing like Daughters on the Dust on our screens in 1988. That experience was so sacred that I could still remember who I was with, what I was wearing, where we went to dinner afterwards to discuss the film hours on end. But what kind of system will not allow a filmmaker like Julie Dash the funds to make her second feature until today? That same broken system that so many of us are fighting to integrate. Mira Nair and I are from different parts of the world, but I felt a profound kinship to her when I saw Salam Bombay making a huge visually stunning fresco that was thought provoking and heartfelt that spoke of social justice and children's rights was her only agenda when she made her first narrative. The story behind making the film also was is, is just as great as the film itself. It involved casting hundreds of, of children and then workshopping the film for six months with these, with these children. I don't know any when doing this in mainstream in mainstream cinema. Talk about badass devotion to the craft. By the way, Mira is also the individual who inspired me to give birth to the first workshops of filmmaking in Jacmel in 2004, when I was living there and worked for the Jacmel Film Festival. Actually, that was the deal, that I would do the programming for the festival if only I could do those workshops. And today I'm proud to say that many of the filmmakers today in Haiti um, were inspired by that, um, by those workshops. And eventually that those workshops planted the seed for the film school, which I did not create, but I had to take credit for planting those seeds. Um, Mira, Stise, Julie embarked on a journey not to deconstruct anything, but impose a brand new aesthetics of cinema through their singular gaze as auteurs. We know exactly where they stood in their art and who they were talking to. They were not talking to Hollywood or the gatekeepers or tastemakers. They were talking to their communities first. They were not trying to make accessible work. They were not pandering. They were simply making art and telling stories from a place of love and sincerity. When I set out to make Aiti Monamur, it is on their shoulders that I stood. It is partly their aesthetics that I referenced, borrowed and paid homage to, and combined it with some Italian neorealism and infused it with a little bit of our own magic realism in our literature and in our folklore. For example, the scene in Naiti Munaimur where the muse is dancing in the midst of thousands of people was directly um, um, inspired from the goddess celebration scene um, towards the end of Salam Bombay. To stage that scene would have taken up the entire budget of Mira's film. And she basically waited and scheduled her film around that celebration threw her, um, her uh, actors into that scene and just basically captured the whole messiness of, of life itself and, and mixing that with fiction. You can only do those things when you're truly independent and do not need to ask permission to create. 
my very my very own agenda in uh, in making IET Monamu was simply to put Haiti in conversation with the outside world, where Haiti was a conversation. I also made it out of this deep desire to counter the plethora of images that I was seeing at the time of the earthquake. I mean, these uh, these images were were like none that I had ever seen. Bloated bodies of 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 my compatriots on the streets and filmed with no dignity. I had never seen white bodies filmed that way, and they numbed me. I found them hollow, and for me, it was painful to watch. And I set out to say that no matter what, the film that I will make will not have any of these images simply because we were we had become numb to them and they don't they don't tell stories they are completely hollow completely empty so when the when the international media picked up and left six weeks after the quake i must have i must admit i was i was totally relieved i hungered for stories without sensationalism or reinforcement of stereotypes in spite of the sorrows of my compatriots, they were singing and dancing in the streets, creating new stories around Gudu Gudu, which is the, the onomatopoeia that um, we call, um, that we use to, to, to call the earthquake because that's the sound that it was making um, when the earth was rattling. But, um, but I was watching my compatriots mitigate and, and, and negotiate with this disaster in ways that I was not seeing in mainstream media. So it became vital for me to counter that with film. Um, I made a documentary called Broken Stones, which talked about um, the self-reconstruction and used the uh, old cathedral, which was destroyed during the earthquake as a sort of Greek forum for my compatriots to come and express themselves, express this the, the, the disaster, but also express the Haiti that they want to see, the Haiti of their dreams. And, um, but I wanted to make fiction. I wanted to have that sort of liberty that fiction gives you for you to impose different ideas and, 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 and images and different stories. So that's how Aiti Monaimua came about. And, um, of course, when I set out to make this film with this motivation, it was not appealing to the funders. They wanted to see mutilated bodies, poverty, exoticism through voodoo, the same old tropes. They wanted to be confronted in their misconceptions of who they think we are. Can we um, put up the first clip from Aiti Monemua, please? Thank you.僕がまだ幼かった頃もしよどちずっと生きていることができれば小鳥たちの朝一番の歌を聞き時や太陽になるのを見届けながら僕が夜を朝に帰る手伝いができるのに都信じていた
thank you. I had a little technical difficulty there. Um, so um, the, the first clip is very symbolic for me because it's, it's the point of departure um, of where the film came from, and it came from this 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 place of of love, but of also of healing. And um, the character in in um, in the film Orfe is actually grieving from uh, the loss of his father, who who, who died during um, um, the the earthquake. And um, and I did not, since I did not want to show graphic images of the effect of the earthquake. Um, when I got on the set, and I did not write this in in um, in the script, this specific uh, um, scene, but the place inspired me, and um, and I saw the crack on the wall, and I remember seeing the cracks on the on the ground um, after the earthquake, especially when going to Leogan from Port-au-Prince. There were these kinds of like cracks on the ground, and that evoked um, that image for me, and um, and so I decided that would be part of uh, of of the film itself all that to say is to very, be very inspired by like the minutia of 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 life as well and um and when you go to a place like like haiti and if you're not if you're looking for the same exact stereotypical images that's all you're going to see but if you're looking for the things that you know if you're embracing the place in a different way and and I speak from from the inside, of course. I mean, it's it's my it's kind of like a luxury that, that I have because I'm an insider and outsider at the same time in my own in my own country. But um, but when I saw that, it it totally spoke to me, uh, th and that's the way that I wanted to evoke. It's thirty five seconds long, which in a movie, thirty five seconds to be looking at something for thirty five seconds is a long time the 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 shot seems very 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 seem very long but that's the time that it took that's how long the earth rattled um um during the earthquake so to juxtapose the audience into that moment of that 35 second uh was me imposing that on the audience as well um, so do not be afraid to do that when you are making films as to if you if you trust your vision and 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 it's true to what the story that you want to tell, then be free and go ahead and 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 give it to us. Um, but it was also yes, it was, and it was also a way for me to do talk to talk about like that chasm that, that existed inside of us as well and what that did when what the earthquake did to us. Um, can we see the second clip? Oh, that's the wrong one. We're back to the first clip. I just want the second clip. What's the content of the first clip, of the second clip? The second clip is when um, the muse is leaving the warehouse and is going to, it's going to find, she's going to find herself in this um, big old celebration. Is that clip three? No, it says clip two. All right, hold up one sec. It's right after, they, they're all like back to back. One second. Okay. Sorry about this. That's all right. Thank you for your patience, everyone.
right that one that's it Thank you. Oops. Gosh, I can't still can't get used to this thing. Um, so that's the scene that I was referring to. Um, and so when I when I wrote the script, I knew that there were marches and commemorative marches all across the country for victims of the earthquake, but I didn't expect for it to be a feast of like dancing and, and so on. And, um, and so, and I also know that I was going to use my, my actor and throw my actor into this, um, into this very real space of, of, of mourning, but celebration at the same time, and that the the contradiction of 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 joy and pain, and the contrast of joy and pain, um, and which is something that is so, for me, deeply Haitian. Um, we dance when we are happy. We dance when we are sad. I mean, this is like sort of like this fragile dance dance of like life and 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 death and and those who are here with us and those who aren't um and those are that was for me extremely important and again i did not know it wasn't calculated i did not know how um how it was going to be received but it felt genuine and it felt important to me in my storytelling and so i allowed it for it to exist can we um um just go to the third clip. You can cover it, Loa. Okay, merci. Dis-moi, maman, ma vous passe plus tard.
Nous avons aimé faire un petit danser une dernière fois avant de retourner à la caille. Où sont les postes machants Où passent les rielles piquantes Où arrivent les souchons de masse Moi, campé à des salines, nous avons crasé l'audience. Chez où vini passé Moi, gardé ou gardé Moi souris ou souris, chérie, moi même ou déjà. Mais la pluie va tomber, j'adon pas trop pousser, yo fait mes réservoirs. Ou pas te doué gade, moi pas te doué gade, moi pas j'en doué ri avec. Si la pluie te tombe, en pile flèche à pousser. Um, th sorry, that one was a little bit long. I wanted to end it after the dance, but um, I I was doing this not on a an an, an editing software at all. Um, so for me, um, in 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 this clip um, where we have uh, the old people. Aiti Monemu was about many things, but the red line that was going throughout the whole entire film was love, unconditional love, love of some of 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 a mother, the love of old people in love, um, love of one's country, love of a writer for um, his characters. I was dealing with all of that, and I wanted to also. Um, for me, the place, the, the film had to be a place for healing, for real transformative healing. And um, especially it was five years after the earthquake and we were not seeing any images about Haiti, except, I mean, if you went on the internet, all you saw is that it's, it's like Haiti didn't exist before and, and it didn't exist after the earthquake, right? And, um, and for me, I just really wanted to fill that chasm with, with, with stories and, 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 and stories of beauty, but pain of, of, of love, mystical, mythical, you know? Um, I really wanted to take it there. And and I had the total freedom to do it, right? And um, and so also, I wasn't so concerned about like you know showing truth. And Haiti is a very matriarchal society. It's a very feminine society, and the women carry the film, the carry the film, carry the the country on their backs. But what happens when they fall ill, right? And um, and what we see in this doesn't usually happen, but we have the 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 husband taking care of the 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 wife and 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 washing her hair and 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 preparing her meal, and um, and I wanted to shift the roles a little bit because I think when we're making films as well, we have to project what we want to see the the the. Um, the love and the kindness that we want to see in our societies as well. And so even if it means like, you know, creating new arch archetypes, you know, for our own people, um, creating new myths for our for, for our people. And um, but I, I 
what I would say is not to worry about the audience and and really just as if it resonates with you, chances are, and you're doing it with a lot of sincerity, chances are it will resonate with them as well. We can go to the um, to the fourth fourth clip. Orphée. Orphée. Tu vas me chercher des cigarettes, des mentholés et du rhum aussi. Merci. Toi? Bah, je dois aller voir un film en fait. C'est quel jour aujourd'hui? Vendredi? Bon, ouais, vendredi. C'est con fou aujourd'hui. T'as vu tous les films, non? Allez, assieds-toi. Mmh. Tu veux un verre? Elle te laisse boire de temps en temps Ouais, parfois. Où ça Merci. Merci. Santé We, we can end it there, Al. So, um, now Haiti is a very difficult place to make films, especially if your, you know, film relies on electricity and, you know, you have to charge your batteries and so on and so forth. You need light. And, and, um, and so on this specific day, um, uh, this is, you know, uh, this was a special scene for us and our young actor was had to head back to school like two days later. Um, and so, but we had to film that day and on that day there was no electricity. So we had to use one, um, our, our, our lead lamp um, that we had on the camera. And um, so it allowed us to really think like resourcefully of what to do with what we have, right? Um, and so the whole entire scene was lit with, with candles and tiki lamps in the back to create backlight and, um, and then kerosene lamps. So the freedom that I had in that scene um, allowed me to be extremely also resourceful and 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 make with what we have and 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 to just take it to that other level where we can push. You keep pushing the light. You keep pushing. You know the work with your actors as well. And if you know you you trust them and they trust you, and so they'll give it. To, they'll give you their best, no matter where you are, no matter where, no matter what the scene is, no matter where you are with them, whether it's dark or light or whatever. And um and so that was the scene also where where um, we said okay we're gonna take it like all the way, and um. And that same and that same that same night, um, I remember uh, there was there was a house that was on fire not too far from there. So we had to stop and go and help to turn out to put out the fire. And uh, meanwhile, we're losing like kerosene. We're losing like you know the 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 kerosene that was like in the lamp. It was this anyway. It was it was it was just a um uh, 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 it was it was off to be a disaster. But we decided that it wasn't going to be a disaster. And so we it was very playful, and we and and we enjoyed it. And we had a lot of fun with it, and um, also the fact that I was in a place. And what I'm trying to get to is that I was in a place where. Um, the people trusted me. I was amongst my tribe. The people who, who, um, who gave me so much of themselves uh, because there was a lot of trust there. Because there's a lot of mutual respect 
So, uh, you know, what I would say to, you know, filmmakers is really to go out there and, and, and find your tribe and be with the people who really want to see you thrive and, and connect with them and make, and make films with them. And this is, for me, that's, that's what Aiti Monamu is all infused with that as well. Um, can we go to the next scene? That's, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Um, so um, the 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 actress in the scene that you saw also in the beginning in the in in the commemorative march is Anisia Uzeman, who is um, um, an actress uh, born in Rwanda, grew up in Belgium and and France, and now lives in the United States and is a filmmaker also, and. Um, uh, is someone that I that I I know for now for over close to like twenty four years, um, and all that to say is trust your actors and create opportunities for them to propose you things all the time. We didn't scout this place. We didn't have time, so we went early in the morning and kind of like you know laid out a little bit of what it is that we wanted to do, and but because we know each other so well, um, she was able to constantly propose things to me, and and I most of the time, like ninety nine percent of the time, always. Um, um, embraced what it is that she proposed. And since this was like no dialogue whatsoever, and it was all about the space and what to do with the space. And in the home that she's in, um, they're called the Demembre in, in, um, in Haitian um, culture. And they're the house of the spirits. They're old houses that you don't, you know, you don't tear them apart. Um, you leave them to the house of the spirits. Um, and this is where you, you come and you worship the spirits of the ancestors and um and the moment she got in there this is what she felt and i i went along with it and she's not from 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 haiti at all um and and she had already been to Haiti. this was like a third trip to to to, to haiti but she let the space talk to her and just allowed herself to, to, to work with what she had. And I trusted that. And so we had a really beautiful report throughout the whole um, making of, of, of IET Mon Amour. And so find those people and work with them, create magic with them. That's 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 the that's the advice that I that I give to to um, emerging filmmakers who are trying to make films with where they are, who are trying to grow where they're planted, who are trying to um, make something out of nothing, who are trying to cut their cloth, as, as Mira often says. Um, work with those people, work with those people who are willing to give you all of that. Can we go to the last clip? It's not the one before last, it's clip number six, the electricity one.
right, right there. <laughs> so, uh, yes, cinema is a serious business, but you don't need to take yourself like so seriously. I mean, it's it's also what we do is playful. It's fun. Um, really, like let your imagination run wild with you. I mean, in this scene, this is um, Orfe played by um, Joaquim Cohen, who is um, also my son um and um and the idea was that you know he, he gets a superpower but with great power comes great responsibility and what is it that we need the most you know like in you know, some of the resources that we need in this country is electricity and so what if he can give electricity and but he would do it also for free for the village and so I ran with that. Didn't know whether that would work or not, or people would get it or there would not, but that's what I felt. And that that's um um that's that's what I wanted to to play with. And um so the playfulness also of 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 cinema. Allow yourself, allow yourself to go crazy with your ideas, you know. And although I always say that cinema is not, you know, on the scale of things, it is noble what we do, but it is not the most important thing. And especially in a society um, um, like Haiti, um, in a country like Haiti today, with all the problems that we have and everything else that is priority, cinema is not a priority. But having said that, I do think that it is it is vital um for us to be able to control our images and tell our stories because we cannot say that we're sovereign if we have no autonomy over our our, our own images our own stories our own lives and so um cinema allows us those spaces to have and take control and um take control of our narratives and 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 be in conversation with the outside world with us actually writing that narrative so um, can we go to the last clip, please? Est-ce que je vais disparaître? Disparaître, c'est pas ton style, c'est pas ton genre. Oui, tu peux disparaître ou revenir en mieux, comme la mer. Non, je ne te vois pas disparaître. Thank you. Um... 
If you're wondering why I selected clips from one film and not from my other films, the answer is simple. In the two decades of being a filmmaker, Aiti Mon Amour was the first film where I was completely free. It was not in development hell forever. I did not need any permission or approval from commissioning editors of different um, television stations or financiers. I had no equity money to give back. I had full editorial freedom. I did not have to pander or cater my story to fit someone else's myopic gaze on who they think I am. Everyone was paid because I believe that people should be paid for their labor. So um, everyone was paid $100 a day. The actors from the technicians, everyone was paid the same. Um, I created a sustainable ecosystem. Uh, I trained and hired local crew. I put people in roles that they had never performed before and, and really got the best out of them. Um, and they did right by me and, and for the film. Um, and these are the people that I call my tribe. All this to say that it is possible. I am preaching what I practiced. To the individual filmmakers, find your purpose and do what you love. Be bold, allow your imaginative curiosity to take the lead. Trust your vision, find your tribe and tell your stories with purpose and agency. Worry less about money and profit because chances are if the work is good, and has resonance, you will see profit. I call Aiti Monaimur the film that keeps giving because every now and then um, I, I would get a call if someone wants to show it in some museum. It's, 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 it's on Amazon Prime. It's on, you know, it's doing its thing. It's living its life and um, still generating revenue till, till today. And I started making the film in 2014. It was a, it was a process. I started in two, summer of 2014 and then took that footage to raise um, some funds through an Indiegogo campaign, and then um, went back in 2000, end of 2014, early 2015. I remained in Haiti and, and edited the film in Haiti and was able to continue filming a little bit. Um, and to the collective, I'd like to say, let this moment coalesce into a kind of manifesto to audaciously imagine an autonomous Caribbean film industry Close your eyes and think, imagine, what would it look like? What are the stories you would like to with? Who do you see yourself building it with? What, what legacies would you be leaving behind for those to come? Would it be a transformative space, a space of healing, built in human values and not profit? And to just round it off to go back to this whole idea of like, you know, decolonizing the gaze. Instead of speaking of decolonizing the gaze or the screen, I would say, let's Caribbeanize it. Thank you so much to all of you and thank you everyone. And um, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Getty. That was incredibly beautiful, um, inspiring, and just all around incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, we're going to turn to the Q&A now. Uh, please stay with us and ask your questions of Getty. Uh, be sure to put your questions in the YouTube, YouTube comment sections. They'll be fed to me, and I will share them out to Getty um, vicariously for you. Um, I have two questions to start with. Uh, first of all, um, I'm really struck by all of the moments, the filmmakers that have influenced you um, and the spaces that you've created to influence others uh, to, to bring us to a truly liberated vision um, of what Caribbean cinema could look like. And I am really, really, I'd love to know what your trajectory was to get to this place, um, what, uh, how you came into contact with those filmmakers. You're still on mute. <laughs> um, I am, I, I'm, I'm very tenacious 
And once I put an idea in my head, I always, you know, like I make it happen. Um, but there are things also that are, I, I don't believe that anything is anodyne in life. You know what I mean? I mean, we live our lives and we plant our seeds and then we manif you know, we ask the universe for things and then they manifest because we ask them. Sometimes we forget that we ask them. But um, for the encounter with Suleiman Sise, um, was simply because I named my first child Yelen. And um, and we were, at, by the way, he's the one who, um, they, they're the one who put together the, 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 the clip of, of, of uh, the festival. Um, and, um, and Yelen, uh, we went to a restaurant uh, one time, uh, he, they were tiny. And um, we kept calling them, you know, come back here, you know, owner her calling Yelen's name and said to us, Yelen, like Suleiman Sise's film? And we said, yes. He said, Sise's in town, you know, um, I'll call him and I'll tell him. And <laughs> um, and so we're like, yeah, right. You know, like, every, you know, he's Malian, he, you know, like all of the Malians know each other, whatever. So we, just, we went home and two days later, there was a message on the answering machine and it was Sise's voice saying that, um, you know, Cisse, you know, this is Cisse. I'd love to meet Yelen. And that's the story of how we met Suleiman Cisse. But I wanted to meet Suleiman Cisse just, just to at least thank him for this, this beautiful piece of art that he did um, with, with this film, Yelen. That when I saw the film, actually, my, my connection to the film, this very kind of like, it was like, you know, the devotional cinema, I don't know if you've read that book that um, Nathaniel Drovsky speaks about, like the moment where you feel that you've been blessed by, you know, like these images. And um, and and I, when I saw that, I was like, you know, this budding filmmaker trying to make films. I had not like made a film yet. And um, and I, and I said to myself, not only that I, 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 I will find this audacious space in me to actually create work that feels that way that people can have this like the spiritual attachment to and um, and then I would name my first kid, whether it was male or female, whatever the gender. <laughs> um, Yelen. And so that's the encounter with 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 um, with Cisse. and um, Julie, I met her very late. Um, when I showed my film at uh, Toronto Film Festival, she she came out to see it. Um, and and Mira Nair, I met her in 1999 when I showed a documentary at the Milan Film Festival. And this was just really like I always wanted to meet her, of course. And I know that I was I was going to find a way to meet her, even if we were not there in that same place at the same time. And I was waiting for the filmmakers' bus, and she was like. Um, president of the jury of the of, of the narrative um, um, uh, uh, selection, and um, and I had missed the filmmakers' bus, and she and her limousine drove by, and she says, "Do you want to ride?" And I said, "Yes," and I sat there, and that was it. And and next thing I know, that I was in South Africa, um, in her home, talking about cinema, and 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 I started making a film on her um, called T "Telling Our Stories," and it was her teaching young South Africans how to make films and tell their stories. And so she planted that seed for me to actually do those workshops in, 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 in Haiti. So that's the trajectory in terms of like how these folks came into my life, but they came into my life through cinema, right? And that's the power also, and that's the beauty of what it is that we do is that how we can touch other people that way in ways that we don't eat, we can't even imagine really, I mean, you know, Cisse will tell this to you, like the honor that it is to have someone give the name of their child, give the your, the title of your film as a name to their child. I mean, there's been others, there's also a Wati, there's some Finiers there, you know, but, um, um, but, but yeah, so that also are things that we don't measure when we set out to make cinema. We never know. You don't know how it's going to affect others and touch others, you know? And until you go to these places. With Aiti Manamur, I, I made it a point to travel as much as well. After a while, I stopped. I mean, it went to like 40 different festivals around the world, but in the very beginning, I, I made the point to travel with it because I really, I, that was the only agenda that I made the film with was to put Haiti in conversation with the outside world. And so I showed it in Kazakhstan 
Um, and I had never been to Kazakhstan and don't know much about like, you know, the Kazakhstan people besides the fact that they were nomads and um, and occupied by by the Russians and, you know, ex, you know, um, Soviet Union. And to have a young woman come up to me and say, you know, through the interpreter, um, can I give her a hug? And I, and I said, yeah, of course. And because she showed me in her film, the same love that we have for our land. I mean, I, I mean, like, I was like, I was, I was like in tears. I was like this, like, you know, like a puddle at the end because, you know, so far, so far from Haiti to hear that, mm -hmm. that for me, just, just, just it, it just, satisfies you know like you know all the pain and all the hardship of like making the, the work and bringing it you know to where it is it's just like you just forget about it the, 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 the hardship it's gone um i think well, you you read my mind because that was going to be my second question about what uh impact it monomore has ha had across the world um any anecdotes that have come to mind but i also want to really highlight this point that you've made about really defending what's important to you and that when you do that it will speak to whoever um and so i'm wondering if you could pull that out a little bit more particularly um i feel like uh or i have experience with funders as you as you have that uh we are seen as one way and one complete region and one monolithic space in the caribbean that is only good for the beach occasionally and then also this kind of cycles of um oppression and so i'd love for you to kind of talk a little bit more about what that means for you and what it should mean for others uh, it it it's i'm not gonna lie and say that it's a simple feat it is you know herculean you know the work of mm -hmm. constantly you know just telling our stories telling our stories and not letting other people tell our stories and defending it constantly but also being very true to to our vision all the time it is extremely hard because people will want you to do other things you know with your film and and to fit inside of that box and they don't understand until today i'm still fighting that same battle right um, and I'm about to like I'm embarking on I'm 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 in Louisiana right now scouting for my next film. Hence the you, know, you have to come visit me. <laughs> Are you in Louisiana? I am. Oh, okay. We'll talk, um, sorry, later. <laughs> so hence the very, you know, like typical hotel um lamp behind me. Um, but 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 so it's 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 a constant fight and but if you truly believe in what it is that you're doing and you know also who you are and that's why I was talking about like I, I really like I don't say things you know I'm very I try to be as impeccable with my words as much as possible and I don't say things just to say them um when I talk about like you know like the recentering of ourselves if you like you know especially in these times in this time of the pandemic it really has given us an opportunity to really recenter to go within because you can't step out so you know you you, you go within and to, to really understand what is your purposes why are you do, what are you doing this for what are your motivations if you're motivated by money then you know like go do something else you know go 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 work in hollywood you know like and beat down those doors and do that but if you are really motivated by that, something that feels like bigger than you, um, um, that feels like a calling, then it is worth it. It is worth it. The hard work is totally, entirely worth it. Um, but you have to know yourself and you have to know what your purpose is and what's, what's motivating you. What is it that, you know, like this thing comes to you. I mean, the film comes to you and it will not leave you long. It will haunt you until you absolutely make it and you will do anything you know, until you make it, you know, you, you, you do anything to make it happen. And so those are the, you know, like the, the, what drives me, you know, it's like that motivation, because I know, I know who I am, what I'm looking for, what I'm motivated by and what my purpose is. If you can answer those questions, then you don't even need to like, think about like the rest, 
your work will be out there people will see it and when you do something with sincerity that's what shows that's why i always say that i'm not interested interested in like showing reality or truth or whatever but the sincerity is what i'm interested in and also i'm i'm, I'm also creating from a space of where i mean it when i move really was created also to provide some form of healing from what you know this disaster that we had gone through and and we can do that through art as well I mean, for the longest time, we've been like, you know, subjects of other people's work. And, 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 and so they get to tell the stories, they get to tell, they get to make history. And so today it's time for the subjects to make history, and not, you know, to continue to be subjects of the others. Yes, I hope everyone's taking notes and writing down all of the, 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 Filmmakers, films, everything that gets you saying, because this is truly a class, a master class. Um, I'm going to start taking some questions from the audience. Um, so Alexandra Warner asks, um, there's a common misconception that Caribbean stories aren't universally resident, resonant. How do you approach your storytelling in a way that engages a global audience? Um, I don't, I, I, I don't let myself, you know, uh, be bogged down by like, you know, misconceptions of others because I am operating from a place of total autonomy. And um, so the fact that to say that, you know, like our work is not universal, just because we celebrate the little idiosyncrasies and I push for those because they are the ones that tell us, you know, that, 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 that really celebrate our identity and the way we see the world. And that's what we should be fighting for with those um, um, idiosyncrasies. But um, but to say that they're not universal, I just gave the example of, you know, like showing the film in Kazakhstan to actually have like a young woman who wants to make films later on come and say to me that, you know, that, that this resonates with her, with the struggle of her own people. I rest my case. I mean, I had the same thing when, when the film was shown in Pachuca in Mexico. A young woman also came up to me and said, I didn't know we could make films this way. And I felt like it was like kind of like me, like leaving like, you know, the, the, the theater after seeing Suse's film and going, I didn't know that we could make films this way, you know, so just trust in you. And, and, and uh, if you're a human being and you breathe and you, you know, you love, you hurt, you have pain and you have anger, you have your angst, chances are someone out there is going to have the same thing. Wonderful. Um, there's a question from Victoria Linares, uh, who wants to know what the film industry in Haiti um, is like, um, and how did you, how were you able to find funding for this film, for IT Monamor? There is no film industry in Haiti. Part of, um, of the work that I do with the Lumière du Sud is trying to instigate an industry and bringing together um, filmmakers and um, and uh, from 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 Haiti and outside of Haiti. But most of our funding comes from outside of Haiti. I mean, the the normal trajectory when you're making a film um, in Haiti is to partner up with like a Tevis Sank, for example, and go to the Francophone Agency and get money from them. There's money from Cinema du Monde. It's all outside. It's all in Europe, and um, and uh, and you know, strings are attached to that. Um, luckily for me, for IET Mon Amour, I didn't have to go that route because I raised the money. I mean, I I was there in two I was I was there in two thousand the summer two thousand fourteen. I was doing some filming work um, for a big exhibition that was going to take place in Paris, and so reinvested the month that my salary into um, starting um, uh, making IET Mon Amour, and with what I had shot. I did an Indiegogo campaign and the whole campaign, the, 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 our mantra was it takes a village to make a film and not just the village where I was going to make the film, but also the village with, with which I was making the film. And so um, to our dismay, um, filmmaking is not a priority in our country. I mean, our, you know, this part of culture, it, it, it's not. And, um, and, and I understand 
because I know we have like a lot of like serious issues to deal with, but at the same time, there are many of us who are there who continue to fight for it. And so um, in many ways than one, you know, through like, you know, doing events like, you know, Les Lumières du Sud or, you know, doing more workshops with, you know, budding documentary filmmakers, which I just did back in from September all the way to May in very sporadic moments, I mentored um, a series of filmmakers um, who were making documentary films, but there's no industry per se in terms of funding, but there's a whole lot of energy and, and what is money, but energy. Great. Um, I have a question here from Inner Sanctum Entertainment. Uh, do you suggest that we do work that pays us before we do what we want to do? I remember you saying that this is the first film where you did exactly what you wanted. Um, I would suggest doing a combination of both. I think I think if you if you have a story to tell and it's like nagging away at you, like you go to sleep and it's in your head, you wake up, it's with you, that you're seeing the characters, you're seeing your image, go out there get 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 the folks who can make this with you and raise the money like creatively you know um through you know people you know i mean you can do like i mean i you know the crowdfunding there's many ways you know bake cookies sell you know stuff but if it is something that you feel that absolutely need to be shared with the world then i encourage i implore you to act to make it make it um and not wait because you know, like, okay, let me wait. I'll make a little bit of money, and then I can make this for that up. If that's the kind of person you are, because I can't like impose, you know, my own ways of of, of doing things. But if you are the person who like to have, and you 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 want to be secured, and you like to have the money there, and then you want to make the film, um, then that's your trajectory. Mine isn't that. Mine is like, oh my god, this is like nagging. It's like it's like it's haunting me, and I gotta make it, and I have to do it, and I find ways to make it. And so if you are that driven by the work itself, then um, I say, do it. Don't work, you know, and work to, for pay, but also make the film. Um, a couple more questions. How easy or difficult was the process to gather distribution for the film? This is from H.J. Leonard. How can we in the Caribbean replicate this path if, if possible? I think I think the whole idea of like this um, the the Caribbean Film Academy and taking it to this level is is really to find those answers to find those spaces of where we can find avenues of distribution and collectively create some form of Caribbean industry. I'm very pan Caribbean. I'm very pan African. I'm not like you know like we have the Haiti film industry and we have this industry because I think we have so much to share. We have so much to learn from one another. Why not join forces? You know, like our motto on our flag um, in Haiti is "L'union fait la force," and it's like in, in unity we are one. And uh, and this is the thing that colonization has done to us, right? It has completely, you know, like just like you know, derouted us even from our own people. And so we need to be creating these kinds of um, collectives. So um, the m distribution for this film um, came to me because it, it, it was going through the different festivals. And uh, the moment you get into a place like Toronto, all of a sudden everyone wants your film and they wanna talk to you. They don't even know what it is yet, but they see that you got the selection. And so everyone wants to, wants you, you're like, you know, the, the, the new kid on the block and you know, your hot stuff. And um, and so, but you have to be very careful because a lot of that stuff can go to your head because the kind of like deals that they want to make with you are not even really very profitable for you after you've done all this work. And um, so Orange Studio is a distribution company in France that came um, to the film. Actually, right after I finished Third Horizon, I went to Haiti. And a week later, I got an email um, saying that Arn Studio wanted to buy the film. They're not the best distributors <laughs> to work with, um, and I do find that they 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 operate in in ways of like you know very like with a very colonial mentality. Um, and I would not work with them again. And I I'm saying this in a very public and open space um, because I think there's a lack of respect for 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 um, filmmakers of color. And the way that they deal with us 
And, um, and I am not about to create, you know, like a, a piece of a piece of art that, you know, I put all my soul and all my energy and, you know, in for you to, you know, treat me like lesser. So, um, yeah. but, uh, but the work needs to exist. If it exists, then you find your, you find your places for you to like show the work. The idea is to make it exist and then find the creative spaces to show it. It may not be like, you know, a major distribution company. It may be you and your friends getting together and bringing, you know, creating a company to bring it out to your, to your audience, but build your audience as you're making the work as well. Um, I have another question from Eugene Fenton. How many days did you shoot for IT Monomore and how many people were a part of the crew? Oh, um, I shot so um, intermittently. So I shot uh, the first uh, was like there was two weeks of shooting. But now when I say two weeks, those are not 12 hour days like, you know, in the United States because, you know, it's too hot. Uh, the sun is just just like really excruciating for black skin in the middle of the day outside, you know, and you have to yes. have like all this light and then you diffuse it so you can like create like the softness and the light or else it's just brutal for us. So I shot like at the, 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 the um, what they call it, the blue hour. I would, you know, we'd wake up like three o'clock, 3.30 in the morning to be ready to start shooting at 4.30, the blue hour and the magic hour but the magic hour doesn't last. Right. And so it's, it's, you know, it's the, you're out there like by two o'clock and then you're shooting. So altogether your shooting days are, are about your shooting hours are about like six hours really. Um, so, so there was the first two weeks in 2014 and then, then, and when we came back end of 2014, early 2015, another two weeks. And then I shot again, another week, uh, you can say it was like, you know, over five weeks, but like kind of like spread out. And my team was a very small team. I had um, uh, the, the, the cinematographer at the time was my husband at the time. Um, and the second camera, it was, is, is my, is the girlfriend of my, of my son. <laughs> my son is in the film. The woman who plays his mother is a very good friend of mine. It's in her house that we're in, you know, like we, you, you, you borrow things, you, you know, you barter, you, and the whole entire village, uh, because it's a place that I know, and it's a place where, like, when I came to that space, I, I, I entered it with a lot of respect and love for the people there. So I got a lot of that back. Um, and uh, so most of the people are from the village, uh, besides uh, James Noel, who plays the writer who lived, who lived in Port-au-Prince at the time, Anissa Uzeman, who who's not from there, um, my son, uh, the one, the woman who plays the mom is from there. Everyone else, you know, is, is from there and, um, worked with very, you know, local crew. I mean, the sound person, um, Yelen sort of doubled between sound. And then, so we also put someone else in, in, in the sound role, which actually this, this young man did not even, he loves music, loves sound and wanted to go to the sound school. And so I was just like, well, come and like, you know, work on the film. And so we trained him while we were making the film. And then the following year, he went to the, to, to the, to the music sound school. Um, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so that's why I mean that I put people in roles that they didn't know before, like the woman who did the makeup. I mean, she just, she likes to do makeup and hair. I was like, well, come and do makeup and hair on the film, you know? <laughs> and um, and she took it so seriously. It was so beautiful. You know, when you trust people and you put them in places for them to flourish, oh my God. And you just like, you know, and, and you're there to watch it. It just, it's just so beautiful to just like watch people just like grow like right there in front of you in very little time. And um, and 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 I feel so grateful to be, you know, a filmmaker for reasons like those as, as well, is to be able to actually, you know, spread the love of, of what we do, you know, towards other people as well. So um, that's, that was the gist of the team. I mean, we were kind of a, we were like a 15 people team, mm. you know, and, and we took naps together. <laughs> <laughs> that that is the piece that I really like. That's absolutely beautiful. I just think it's such an 
uh, incredible um, advantage we have in the Caribbean that the familial and extended familial connections can really lend to creating art. And that also builds your audience more, right? Because that hairstylist or makeup artist is going to extend out to her community further and further to tell about the work that they did. Yeah. Um, we have more questions. They're coming in fast. Uh, I'll take two more. Um, Kike Cubero Garcia asks, have you made aesthetic use of filming errors as a way of expressing something? Oh, I oh I, I'm 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 so good at doing that I mean because it's, it's, it's like you know what they say there's a there's a Creole saying that says that so like you're churning water to make butter and so what that means is really like you know making something out of nothing and using like an error you know like a thing that may have been like a mistake and finding the happy accidents and so um uh Oh, I love, I love, I love integrating that into my work. And I said it, I opened it, I opened up, you know, like the, the, the series of clips with that, that crack on the wall. And that crack on the wall was like next to the bed. And, and, and I just like, and it just spoke to me so much that I was just like, I became obsessed with the crack on the wall, just like I, so I made the character obsessed with the crack on the wall because it was so symbolic of what it represented. It was like a gift actually um um and 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 it totally worked you know it totally worked and it wasn't yeah. it's a crack on the wall but that said so much and it's how you frame it it could be just a crack on the wall because the house is old and it's falling apart for me that crack on the wall represented the chasm that that we were we were experiencing like post earthquake it represented you know like that physical aspect of like you know the ground that's like unstable under our feet you know and um so yes use it use your your their their magic comes out of it for sure amazing so i'm going to blend two questions into one last piece um, Dark Dahlia uh, was recently accepted into film school in the UK. She comes from a small island that doesn't have a big media industry. And many are saying it's risky and discourage her from pursuing film. Um, and to combine with that, uh, I think about Dahlia in the future from this question. So if you were to, and I hate the word imagine because I really think that we can make it happen sooner than we think what a radical future would look like in the Caribbean that finds its cinematic voice, but also connects with other parts of the global South, you know, what would that look like and how can we get there? Um, so I would definitely not discourage her because it's always good to step out because when you step out of your, your home, you have so much more appreciation for it. When you go back, you look at it with like these new set of eyes. And I, I think for me, that's why I was able to make a film like Aiti Mon Amour. A filmmaker inside of Haiti would never make Aiti Mon Amour because they're so in it all the time. And it's hard, a lot of the times it's hard for them to see the beauty. It's hard for them to see the kindness of the people because there's so much like, it's a stressful place. And people are always like, you know, um, um, just dealing, constantly dealing with things, dealing with like, you know, making the the generator work you know like we we're out of gas again and you know like, and i just go in there like okay i'm just here for like you know and so um but i did i mean i did move there with my kids i moved back there i mean i was born there and moved to the united states but i did take my kids there in, in 2003 all the way to 2005 we stayed there for two years so i was able to actually um um be completely integrated into into the space right but the idea of like the, this back and forth, you know, that we do this constant, you know, like journey of back and forth reinforces our gaze in the place. You know what I mean? And we are able to look at it like sort of like outsider, but sort of like insider. So the fact that I could, so the fact that that small, tiny little crack can speak to me that way, I'm not sure that it would necessarily speak to a filmmaker living inside of Haiti that in that way you know because i'd see it again it'd be like oh my god like the house is falling apart you know but um um and so uh, so i say yes do leave the island and go see things elsewhere see cinema meet new people you know and 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 come back come back and 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 mix that 
you know? And um, as long as you know what your purpose is and what, what your motivation is, you, you can go anywhere, you know, and learn and then, and then, and then take that back and unlearn what you did and then find the good things, you know, just pick and choose from there. I mean, I had to learn so many things. Like I said, I mean, like I had gone to like, I had like, you know, um, finish, you know, film studies and, and, and I had, I had never seen, you know, like a, a film by an African filmmaker, you know, so it, that didn't make any sense to me, you know? And so, so for me, I don't, I, I I'd say to her, go, don't listen to anybody to tell you that, you know, like there's no, you know, like the, even if there's no film industry in the islands, there's no film industry in Haiti either, but we have a lot of filmmakers today, a lot and a lot of great filmmakers as well. You know, um, um, uh, Jessica Genius is a filmmaker who's, you know, who's an actress who's now a filmmaker, made a documentary now. She, her first feature is in Cannes. You know, like we, you know, we're there, you know, and, and we're populating this, those screens no matter what. We're also, you know, very much, you know, it, want to create, you know, new canvases for us to show like our work as well. And that's what brings me to what you're saying. Um, I think we're already doing it slowly. I think this 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 space alone, the fact that you can, you know, get together with Temba and and you know and Alicia and Sergio and 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 Sergio and and Ram Ramola and Jason and actually be talking about it, it's already doing it. And 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 actually, you know, create this platform. We're already doing it. We're already we're already you know like coming together collectively. We're already thinking about like the kind of works that we want to make. And and I just want us to I just want us to push it even further and think about it in ways that's not the same system that exists already because that system is 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 much too broken and so if, if it we cannot create the same systems over and over again and say that and put a new color on them and say well it's a black it, you know it's like yeah. it's black oh, it's Caribbean but but we're doing it in yeah. the same you know um, hostile. Um, inhumane ways, you know. Um, so that's that. That's my. That would be my advice: is to actually think of, think of like making it really radically different. You know that it's places of like that are built on on on, on shared values and 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 giving worth to those values as opposed to you know like just basically profit driven, or else we just make like empty entertainment and we make fluff, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, and at least that's not the kind of filmmaker that I am. I want to make something that's entertaining, that that makes you think, that also, you know, um, provokes you, that you may not necessarily understand, but you want to have a conversation with. And um, I really want, you know, like when I make films for for us to like, you know, inhabit that space between the screen and and where we sit to actually have that conversation with the with the work that you're seeing in front of you. And, um, but I really do think that we are doing it. I mean, the third Horizon Film Festival is going on. It's like what, fifth year? Exactly. Fifth year, you know? And, and, I, and, and the other thing also is, you know, like remember where you come from because a lot of people forget where they come from. And mm. so I could have like totally been like, you know, when Third Horizon like said, we want to open the festival with your film and da da da. I could have been like, well, no, like I have, I want to do these other festivals first and I want to do this first. No, for me, it was important. And we have to, we have to start putting our money where our mouth is as well, right? Talk the talk and walk the walk. We say that we want to support each other. Don't just say we want to support, actually do it. And I think, um, and saying, yes to this was also part of it although it scared the shit out of me <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know like making speeches and things you know like I'm a filmmaker I make images I don't like you know do lectures but um but but you we have to get out of our comfort zone right and we have to push and we have to and 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 we have to be very 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 tenacious about it and and be determined in what it is that we want to do or else we can sit here and and blame the colonizers like until kingdom come mm -hmm. at some point Absolutely. stop talking about them get them out of the equation and just build our own you know um institutions and they will come that's the truth they will come in droves um 
I'm really, really, really happy that you got out of your comfort zone and joined us today. I know that I um, received an immense amount of knowledge and wisdom and inspiration from this talk. There are comments in the chat um, talking about the inspiration you're providing. Uh, thank you so much. We've come to the end of the Q&A. Just want to thank you, Getty, for sharing yourself with us. Um, and I also want to thank everyone who joined out in Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook world. Thank you for joining us for Towards a New Aesthetic, Caribbean Cinema in Focus with the incredible Getty Falang, presented in partnership with Plago, Emerge, and Digicel. Please keep an eye out for their competition launching July 1st, looking for the best short form videos from across the Caribbean. Um, we'd also like to thank our founding sponsor, the Knight Foundation, for believing in the vision and mission of Third Horizon. We also extend our deep gratitude to Just Films, Ford Foundation. And finally, we must give, but not least, a special thank you to Romola Lucas and Justin Blaze, the original founders of the Caribbean Film Academy, um, Alicia Cristiani, for being the bridge between that version and our new incarnation of the Caribbean Film Academy and the folks behind the screen making everything possible, Sergio Andres Lobo Navia, Lauren Monzon and Janine Charles Ferre for their hard work across tech development and PR. Um, please tune back in tomorrow for our next masterclass, Funding and Financing in the Caribbean at 5.15 p.m. Um, we look forward to seeing you and of course to learn learn more about our other workshops and line up at the festival visit us at thirdhorizonfilmfestival.com dahlia don't give up keep no. going make your film there are other um, spaces in the film world that you can thrive and flourish in so thank you for joining us once again and good evening thank you